I'm not sure you can say that Pico PCs are popular, but they're definitely more of a thing than they were in the past. So let's take a look at the smallest desktop I've ever had my hands on. So a while back, I got my hands on a Kangaroo Pico PC. Uh, it's just a little desktop that I got for free through dumb luck, and I figured we'd take a look at what makes it tick and if it's really worth anything. So I ended up running this computer through its paces to find out what it's actually good at and what it could be used for. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what's inside. So this is actually a pretty cool computer, in concept at least, if nothing else. It has an Atom Z8500 uh, 1.44 GHz processor. 2 gigabytes of LPDDR3 RAM, a 32 gigabyte eMMC flash storage drive, and comes preloaded with Windows 10 Home. I was actually really impressed with the wireless solution they included in there too. It's Intel's AC7265, which is pretty much top of the line. It's a 2x2 AC solution for up to 867 megabits per second max theoretical link speed, and it worked absolutely great. It of course runs on Intel HD graphics because who the heck is going to be able to fit a graphics card in there. And it comes with a dock that has one USB 2.0, one USB 3.0 port, and an HDMI out. Plus, arguably the coolest thing, it comes with a built-in fingerprint scanner. So you get that added security in there too. So initial setup on this computer is about what you can expect on just about any Windows 10 PC. However, I was pleased to find that there is virtually no bloatware whatsoever. I did run a handful of benchmarks on this computer, but I seem to have lost the file that I recorded those benchmarks into, and unfortunately, I already sold this computer weeks before making this video. I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to not do that anymore. Though you can see that it clearly got 702.7 .7 in Performance Test 8. Not bad for a $100 PC. I also ran a few games through Steam's in-home streaming from my main computer to this one, such as Grand Theft Auto V as well as Dead Space 2. These games streamed wonderfully through in-home streaming. The uh, excellent internet connectivity of this computer combined with pretty decent performance power overall makes it a pretty good option for a video game streaming PC. However, when I tried to play even the simplest games, such as the original Portal from 2006, the computer chugged along and quite frankly, the game was absolutely unplayable. I mean, seriously, even Minecraft wasn't running smoothly. But hey, at least you can play Age of Mythology and the original Tomb Raider. Windows 10 is alright, but I wanted to see how this computer would perform in other environments. I was really eager to install Linux, Windows 7, and maybe even Windows XP. Unfortunately, there didn't seem to be any way I could find to boot from any kind of external media. Not even the recovery flash drive that I made from the Windows version that came installed on this computer. This was extremely disappointing because I was really hoping that this might be a good option for a cheap Linux server. At the end of the day, it's a cheap computer, and it performs like a cheap computer but it's also priced like a cheap computer. So if you need a cheap computer that's good for getting office work and web browsing done, or if you need a new game streaming client, or if you need something portable but for some reason don't want a laptop, the Kangaroo PC is actually a really good option. It's not much of a performer, but it's really well built, and the built-in fingerprint scanner is a really nice addition. I could absolutely recommend this to someone who's only spending $100 on a computer, if this is what they're looking for. So unfortunately, I've made a habit so far of only making videos about computers that I no longer have on me. I'm going to try not to do that for the future, but anyway guys, thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.